Okay, welcome back everyone. So, yes, it's been a while, um, but I actually attempted to upload a series of these videos um, back in Poland, uh, where I just came back. Um, but unfortunately, the laptop um, with which I used to record those videos is now pretty much dead, so I can't really access those videos anymore. That's why I'm redoing them here, which, I mean, I can't really complain about. Um, so now, the random topic of today is exact differential equations. We coming, we're coming all the way back to differential equations, which is a bit strange, but again, this recently piqued my interest, so uh, that's why I wanted to discuss them. And I think it's pretty nice because it's a nice recap of some important ideas in Calc 3 about uh, vector fears and whatnot, Ve vector fears, vector fields and whatnot. So let's see, exact differential equations. So what are those? Those are differential equations of the form, my marker will work, axy plus bxy. So these are functions in uh, two variables, dy dx or y prime if you like, equal zero. And there's a special property that is satisfied by these coefficients here, a and b. That is that the partial derivative of a with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of b with respect to x, okay? So this might look familiar to you for, if you remember some concepts about um, conservative vector fields from Calc 2. Actually, it's well known that this implies, this implies that the vector field, so let's consider, consider, consider f equals this vector field a b okay this if the, the components of this vector field are satisfy this property which i'll be writing normally as a y this is more no different notation for partial derivative if it satisfies this property then it's a conservative vector field namely it there exists a f there exists uh, a function such that its gradient equals um, this vector field okay so well, let's prove that so we claim, we claim that, we claim that if a y equals bx, um, f is conservative. So I'll just write it like that. Okay. Let's prove that. That's what we're going to do for this video. I'm planning on splitting up videos into more bite-sized pieces so it's not like for a little 30 minute 20 minute video anyway those are hard to, harder to upload so yeah i'll do those at times but right now um i think it's better if they're bite-sized so first let's get this done okay so how do we go about this well let's see let's notice the similarity the sort of similarity of if you look at these two parts and if you recall Green's theorem, which acted on a vector field f with two components in this case, and these pieces look very similar to, there was some operation that was conducted on them inside the double integral of the region enclosed by our nice path. And we'll kind of see what nice means there. So let's recall Green's theorem. So that is, that is for some nice, nice path C and region, and I guess I should say enclosed region D, we have the following. So we're going to have this line integral, right? line integral along the edge. The kind of idea is that if you sum up all of these little tiny bite-sized areas in the middle, they kind of cancel out because their orientation is going in the opposite direction. By the way, I should specify uh, this, let's see, nice path. So what we mean by that is positively oriented, namely it's going counterclockwise. Okay, so this C is going counterclockwise. Um, it's also closed, simple, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, piecewise smooth, if we really need to know what that means, but anyway, we, we don't really have to worry about that stuff, um, that's if we're really nitpicky, but let's keep going, so 
we're going to use our vector field F, take its line integral, okay, along C, and that's equal to the double integral along this region D of the following. Let's see if I can actually get this right. That's going to be the partial derivative of B with respect to X, I believe, minus the partial derivative of A respect to act with respect to y I believe that's correct okay um, now it, it depends the sign here depends because if we're if you want it so this is for positively oriented if it's negatively oriented then we're just gonna pull out a negative sign so that to make it positively oriented so anyway uh, let's let's keep going and I'm doing my classic slant thing hopefully you can at least see that well though so I need a taller board that will make it easier. But anyway, enough of ranting. But let's see what we have here. Like I said, if we remove these bars. Notice this, we have this property. These exactly fit these components. So these actually cancel out to zero. Namely, this is equal to zero. Okay? Double integral along just the con that just the plane uh, zero is surely gonna be zero. Okay. There's no area under that. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we have that this line integral is equal to zero. And if you again recall a result from uh, multivariable calculus, we show that actually this condition is equivalent to path independence. And path independence actually implies um, conserva conservativeness, okay? Um, so, Let's see, let's see again how this implies path independence. So, uh, so maybe for more space, I'll just keep going here. So what do we have? Well, let's see what we have. So we have C as a closed path. So maybe let's get a picture down here first. So let's kind of draw something like C. This is a nice, simple, closed, right? It's definitely piecewise smooth. Okay, so let's say we have an arbitrary path C. And for any path C, we can always find two unique points on that path. So let's, for example, take these two points. It really doesn't matter. It's just they're nicer when they're far apart, right? I'm going to make them bigger so you can see them better. Yeah. So this is our path C. And let's construct two different paths and show that they provide the same line integral. That'll show path independence. So this one and that one. And notice that C is constructed by first by first going along here, right? That's counterclockwise, remember. So by first going along this path, I'll call this path C1, this C2. By first going along this path C1 as normal, but going in the opposite direction of path C2. So that would be negative C2, right? This looks like a 1, C2. So now what does this imply? Well, this implies that Let's write this line integral in a different way. That's actually just going to be using some properties, easy to prove properties of line integrals. The path, the line integral along C1 dot dr plus the line integral along negative C2 f dot dr. Okay. But line integral along negative C2, that's going to be equal. Well, this is all equal to zero. This guy, this guy is just, so dot, 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 minus the integral along C2 of F dot dr. Okay, so now if we actually add this term to both sides, we're going to get what we want. We're going to get the line integral along C1 is equal to the, of the same thing, equal, is equal to the line integral along C2. So that's exactly what we wanted. Just to make this clear, I'll write it out. C1 F dot dr is equal to the line integral along C2 of f dot dr, as desired. Now I could continue proving that this implies uh, conservativeness, but I guess at some point we should stop, um, otherwise the video would be like infinitely long. Okay, uh, we're gonna eventually get down to like, oh, uh, let's prove this algebra fact, right? My induction. Anyway, uh, let's leave it at that. So again, let's recap, what have we successfully done? We've successfully shown that if a vector field F with coefficients, co components A and B 
and those components satisfy this property, then f is said to be conservative. And what does that mean? I.e. I.e. Uh, there exists, I'll use this notation loosely, there exists f, x, y, such that the gradient of f of x, y is equal to f, is equal to a, b. So, or another way to say that is that f, the partial derivative of x, is equal to a, the partial derivative of y with respect, the partial derivative of f with respect to y is equal to b. Okay, so that'll kind of uh, create the framework for the next video where we're going to finish this off. We're going to give uh, a nice way to actually solve this differential equation. We're going to give um, an explicit, the, the set of explicit solutions are going to be given in the next video. So I'll see you then.